Welcome to another lecture on English literature. I'm, I'm David Hornbuckle. Today we're talking about Canterbury Tales by Chaucer, specifically the Miller's Tale and also how the Miller is characterized in the general prologue to the Canterbury Tales. The general prologue, uh, Chaucer introduces the reader to 28 pilgrims, including himself and the host of the Tabard Inn, who has decided to accompany the pilgrims. Pilgrims have gathered to make a pilgrimage or religious journey to Canterbury Cathedral, where a saint named Thomas Becket had been murdered and martyred over a century previously. From Chaucer's description of the pilgrims, it's clear that they belong to England's emerging class of people who make their living through professional or commercial activity. In other words, they belong to what we would today call the middle class. This is a new emerging uh, class of people at the time. As Chaucer describes them, we see that they do not lack for money and that most of them spend their money on themselves and enjoy doing it. From Chaucer's account of each pilgrim, it becomes increasingly clear that this poem is a satire, a form that uses details in the work to criticize situations or circumstances that exist outside the work. In other words, the characters and events in the work allow the author to criticize something that is part of the reader's world rather than just being part of the story. Satire has two parts, a satiric object, which is what is being criticized, and the satiric norm, which is what's being held up for admiration and approval. Both the satiric object and the satiric norm are implicit. That is, they are implied rather than being explicit or directly expressed. In other words, the reader must read the story carefully to see what kinds of values it implicitly praises and criticizes. The term estate satire refers to satire that's directed at social class or social status. In the Miller's Tale, Chaucer is satirizing the way that an increasing level of prosperity in England has created a class of people for whom money is more important than traditional religious and intellectual values. So here, money is the satiric object and traditional religious and intellectual values are the satiric norm. The pilgrims are apparently on a religious pilgrimage, but it's soon clear that their primary purpose is mainly to show off and to have fun. Chaucer's satire of materialism is very apparent, both in his depiction of the Miller in the general prologue and in his tale. The Miller is crude and lewd, quarrelsome, drunken, and profane. True to character, he tells a shockingly obscene tale, which Chaucer employs to continue the satire that runs throughout his other tales. In the Miller's tale, Chaucer is criticizing materialism that has a corrupting effect on family life and professional life. John, the old carpenter, has become rich enough through the practice of his trade to buy a farm. Since being a landowner was a sign of higher social status in the Middle Ages than being a tradesman with no land, we know that John has moved up the medieval social ladder. In the process, he's acquired enough money not only to buy this land, but to persuade a very attractive and much younger woman to marry him. Because John's wife, Allison, is attracted to John solely for his money, she is open to sexual overtures made to her by two younger men, Nicholas and Absalom. Allison's two would-be lovers are quite similar in many respects. Both are educated and musically talented. They're both professionally associated with the Catholic Church. However, Nicholas is different from Absalom in one crucial way. His attempts to seduce Allison are much more direct than Absalom's and she is more receptive to her more aggressive lover. The fact that Absalom and Nicholas are very similar to each other in several respects, but strikingly different in at least one other way, marks them as foils to each other. A foil is a character that accentuates characteristics in another character by the differences between them. The sexual comedy that is generated by their various pursuits of Allison is extremely coarse. However, Chaucer brings an exceptionally high level of artistic control to material that might simply be crude in the hands of a less skillful artist. We can see his skill by observing how he follows and transforms the conventions of a medieval narrative form known as the fablio. In accordance with the conventions of this literary form, the Miller's tale is full of exceptionally vulgar details or scatology. The conclusion of the Miller's tale with Absalom's unfortunately placed kisses which culminate in the brandishing of Nicholas's posterior is one of the most scatological passages in all of English literature. However, Chaucer does not introduce scatological content into the Miller's tale simply for shock value. 
The comic sequence of events produced by the branding, Nicholas's cry for water, John's cutting the rope on his tub, his fall from the roof, his broken arm, and his discovery of his wife with her lover, all work to the criticism of characters who are motivated by greed, lust, and social ambition. As the crudest story in the Canterbury Tales, the Miller's tale provides a perfect artistic match for his character, for the Miller is clearly the rudest and most boorish of all the pilgrims. Chaucer's literary skill is also evident in his handling of allusion. An allusion is a reference in a literary work to something from outside the work. Allusions may be topical, that is, they may refer to people, places, or events that exist or have existed outside the realm of literature. For example, Chaucer's detailed description of Allison's dress is a topical allusion to forms of women's dresses that were current during his period. Allusions may also be literary. That is, a literary work may refer to details that exist in another literary work. During the Middle Ages, one prevalent form of literary allusion was the typological allusion, or a reference to the Bible. Chaucer presents his readers with a typological illusion when Nicholas tricks John by telling him that a second flood is coming. A reference to the biblical flood described in Genesis, this typological illusion reinforces the carpenter's ignorance of the biblical promise that God would never destroy the world by flood again. In combination with the fact that he has married a woman who values him only for his money, the rich carpenter's ignorance and credulity add another level to the artistic complexity of Chaucer's estate satire in the Miller's Tale.